Oh, Foot Clan, we have the episode you've been waiting for. The Deucers join the three of us on a live mock draft. Things get competitive. They get exciting. You don't want to miss a minute of it. And we've also got the UDK for Life giveaway coming up, ultimatedraftkit.com. Don't miss our live stream later today. Leave a comment, like the video, enjoy. I've seen many terrible things during my watch, but none more horrifying than a wasted second round draft pick. That's why I always use my fantasy footballer's ultimate draft kit to guide me through the cold. Though my friends and family league keeps getting smaller and smaller, my fantasy team is just getting stronger and stronger. Join me at www.ultimatedraftkick.com and prepare yourself to fight the good fight. Winter is coming, but so is my hashtag Foot Clan title. I guess I do know something after all. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Friday, August 19th. Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, right? Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. So excited to be with you once again. A mock draft episode on today's show. And don't, nope, just stop, stop yelling. Stop screaming. We've I, got the deucers oh. on the mock draft today. I don't, I didn't want the crowd, you know, the pitchforks and all I that. I see. I thought you were speaking to me and Jason and we had said nothing at that no, point. No, no, I won't. Ask okay. you to stop yelling until later. Yes. All right. But the deucers are in the building. We've got Kyle, the judge, the owl. <laughs> and um, our show. Is I know. I know. When, it, when I take a step back, I right. go, wow, that, that show's dumb. Sure. <laughs> and one of the things that I think we're consistent on is that you can always take that step back and conclude that. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. We want to make sure that, you know, uh, you know, at any time during your listening experience, you could say, yeah, this is pretty dumb what I'm doing. <laughs> right, right. And I think you could say that now. You could say that 20 minutes from now. Hopefully, yeah. you know, yeah. 20 years from now. And I think, I mean, in reality, fantasy football is a little bit like that, too. Oh, yeah. yeah you, should be, you should be watching the game, rooting for what's happening on your phone, and go, this is pretty dumb what I'm doing <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah, and, and the truth is, is all the dumb people they don't know they're dumb, right? Like, because we're all dumb together. Yeah. So it's not dumb. We're so smart. We're this, smart. This show is great. This is a really smart show. Very sophisticated. Also, to uh, oh. pre-answer the questions, the Deucer Cam is still coming. Yeah. Uh, we had to wait on lighting forever, and so it's uh, supply chain. Yeah. Yeah. It was <laughs> stuck in the Suez Canal. Yep. Was it? Yeah, that's it's where just, most of the lighting was. It's a real timely reference. Yeah, Suez Canal <laughs> jokes. Again, another mainstay. Um, but no, the deuce... I've been catching up on the news, fellas. <laughs> I'm months behind. <laughs> was the Suez where that big boat was stuck? Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, that was a long time ago. Um, I don't want to miss anything, though. Is the Berlin Wall down? Is that? Did that happen? Gorbachev took care Got of that. Got it. Got it. Gorby. We have a big announcement today. Jason, take it away. So, so here's the deal. You've heard us talk about it all week, but today is the day we are giving away the Ultimate Draft Kit for life on a live stream tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern. Wherever you want to watch YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, we are going to be live 6 p.m. Eastern to answer your fantasy football questions, chat, have fun, get ready for the season. And at the end of that live stream, we are giving away a UDK for life. You will have it forever. And we have we have decided you can bequeath that yes. down generations. The lawyer's approved. And so this There is, is one rule to that though. It has to be a handwritten handwritten yeah. bequeath document. For sure. It's if it doesn't have a the, wax seal, right. it's not legit. It's gotta go in into the will, into a trust. Otherwise, we're taking that back. Yeah. And but, into like maybe a chest too that they open up and find at the end. Sure. Must be buried. Must yeah. be buried. <laughs> Must you, know, be buried. you gotta find it with a map, otherwise <laughs> Um, it's a map. It doesn't count. There's but, a map. 
Oh, oh. Holy moly, we Friday are in Friday mode. Friday mode. <laughs> um, but yes, how do we are, you get into that contest? You you uh, get the ultimate draft kit anytime before that. We will we will be randomly pulling someone at six thirty Eastern. So long as you get your ultimate draft kit before then, you are entered in a chance. And if you got it in the past, you're good. Everyone who's ever had one, you are entered for that. It's a great time on that show. And obviously, you need the Ultimate Draft Kit anyways to dominate your drafts that are going to be happening this or next or one of these weekends. A lot of drafts this weekend. So, I've been talking uh, to some friends, and they're they're already on flights, and they're getting ready for this weekend's draft. And um, very excited about that. Also giving away a Debo Samuel signed jersey and a Stephon Diggs helmet. It'll be a good time on the live stream, uh, ultimatedraftkit.com. Uh, what else is going on? We talking news now? Yeah. Sounds All right, good. let's do it. News and notes from around the league. All right, let's start here. Jacksonville Jaguars running back. James Robinson is expected to be ready for week one. Head coach Doug Peterson says, I don't think you just go full steam ahead, but you gradually increase his reps. Don't want to stress his body, but he needs enough work where he's possibly ready to go for Washington. And what is crazy here is I, I remember saying this months ago when the timeline seemed awful that the local people there that cover this team still always consider James Robinson the starter, that it's his job, and Travis Etienne is more of the, uh, the passing down back, and that's – been the steady drumbeat this still doesn't make sense to me because of the specific injury in the timeline it is so difficult to come back from but we keep hearing it that James Robinson is expected to not only be ready but be the starter so is this scaring you off of Travis Etienne at the current ADP I have had him lower than that because of my confidence that Robinson will come back I think the pathway to running back success on a Jacksonville offense with question marks is having it all that's what gave James Robinson and Leonard Fournette value in years past you know I watched Travis Etienne in the preseason he's not a big guy you know there there are question marks he had one kind of nice run up the middle where he got free for about eight or nine yards outside of that it's like seven carries for almost nothing I think this team needs compliments and yes so I guess the answer that's a long way of saying yeah it's a little scary to not know how much you're going to get especially four, five, six weeks into the year. I mean, maybe week one and week two, it's all ETN, but what does that even represent when we haven't seen him? I would agree with you that um, in the, the value we've had out of the Jacksonville running back has been primarily because it's a one-man show, and it doesn't look to be a one-man show. That being said, if I was going to pick one of these two backs, it's clearly Travis ETN. Yes, yes. He is the far more explosive athlete, pass is catcher. healthy, and is a great pass catcher. With a quarterback who, you know, Trevor Lawrence checked it down a lot as a rookie. So I, I think there's he's going to get a lot of use. If he's in the fourth round, I'm still fine with Travis Etienne. Also, uh, Todd Bowles yesterday said he does not have a definitive date for Tom Brady rejoining the team but isn't concerned about it. This became uh, a news point, you know, the sleeper alert, things of that nature because of, you know, a very fair – because reasonable fear that the man who retired once this offseason may retire again. Yeah, it is a very bizarre situation, especially considering the fact that it's not a that like you would think that this would be like a massive national news story of look, Tom Brady is just not even at camp. He's been gone for uh, you know, 10 days and they don't know when he's coming back. The, you know, football is happening soon. They're, Bowles is like, I, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm preparing for the game. It's like, yeah, it would be nice to have your quarterback. Um, obviously, he comes back. He's fine. He's Tom Brady. He's, you know, 4,500 years old and has played football <laughs> for the entirety of it. So Since we're, birth, yes. We're not, he's we're as not, old as the trees. <laughs> yeah, we're not worried about, like, oh, he needs his reps. I think Correct. the only thing here is just there is it. There feels like it's a greater than zero percent chance that he doesn't come back, and it, I know that sounds like outrageous. No one would ever just retire right before a season, but I remember I'm old <laughs> enough to remember when we did a live show in Phoenix, and right before the show, right before we come out on stage, 
Andrew Luck has retired. So just, you know, maybe if you're having a draft this weekend and you're deciding between Tom Brady and someone else in the exact same tier. Yeah. Maybe not draft the guy that could be retired. Yeah. It's, yeah, it, it, I think he's coming back. I we, think all, we, we all think he's coming back. It's just it is now the story has dragged on to the point now where it's weird. I also want to highlight something that may affect Brady regardless, but losing Ryan Jensen in the in the center position, a player that came back only because Brady came back, then was injured, not having either guard from your Super Bowl run, having the interior of your line beat up. No Gronk, his his buddy. Right. Yeah. There there's some things there. And then Is he trying to get Gronk back? Is that what he's doing? Oh, he's he's on Gronk's couch, isn't he? They're they're off Oh playing. my gosh, they're just like beer they're, pong or something right they're now. They're just crushing some brews, playing some bags. <laughs> And he's trying to get him back. But, I mean, this was an offseason where he may have tried to, through his agent, navigate his oh, way to Miami with Sean, have. with Sean Payton. <laughs> and, you know, the agent kind of fell on the sword there so that Brady and was fine. But there's just some – and no Bruce Arians. Like, there's a lot of peripheral things. And the, the Buccaneers company line has been, oh, this is all planned. If it's all planned, they would have told us. If it's all planned, we would have known Brady's missing 15 days. Yeah. But it's kind of like, mm. it's getting weird. Now it's more like Todd Bowles might not know what's happening. And he's just saying, I'm not worried about it because what else are you going to say? Yep. Yeah. What? Are you, what? What's the alternative? Guys, I'm super worried. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, press, listen up. I Help. am freaking out. I'm losing sleep at night. I'm so freaking out, man. Right? Are you writing this down? <laughs> and if he leaves, poor Todd Bowles. I know. Who got a second shot at a head coaching job? We're not, no, we can't even. We All can't right. do this. All right, we won't do that. Right. Hey, I do want to mention this, especially for deeper leagues, dynasty leagues. Uh, in Pittsburgh, it appears that undrafted rookie Jalen Warren has supplanted Benny Snell as the number two running back. He's been super impressive. Six for 34 in the first preseason game, but just around camp, um, four for 30 through the air. That's a big deal because if you can give some snaps um, to somebody other than Najee Harris. The team seems to want to try to do that a little bit. I have I picked him up in our dynasty league just to have the insurance policy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've seen in the past Tomlin when the, his primary bell cow running back goes down, he usually just brings one guy up and says, "Okay, it's you today." And so got he, tired of doing that with Benny Snell, right? Because he was like, "Why are you so slow?" <laughs> and Benny so, Snell. That's yeah, way, that that's, joke has been there for oh, okay, years. Well. As long as Brady has been playing football. Since the Berlin right. Wall? Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Two Berlin Wall jokes. You betcha. Can you we, can we betcha. get a third in? We'll figure Stay it tuned. out. <laughs> All right. Um, any other news that we need to cover here? Uh, I'm seeing head shaking. No, the Deucers will be drafting with us today. Let's get to it. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. All right, you asked for it, and you shall receive. We're doing a 12-team half PPR mock draft. One quarterback, two running back, two wide receiver, one tight end, one flex, four bench. Live here on today's show. And um, Mike is drafting from the number one spot. I've got the number three pick. The Deucers ended up with the number five pick. And Jason sitting at 11. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't mind eleven as much as the middle of the draft. I, I really hate when I'm at seven, eight. Yeah, yeah, I do too. So, Mike, you get to kick this off. I think Kyle the Borgogan will be the Deucer representative on the show today, and um, you know, I, I can't help but admit, I think the people are rooting for the Deucers here. That's fine. So just don't screw up, Kyle. Is all I'm saying. Don't. It's this is an easy win for you, as long as you make all the right decisions. You understand? I feel great. We've got yeah. a great team back here. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Brooks is in. All right. Um, Mike, you have okay. the first pick. Is this a... The 101 to me is locked. It's between Jonathan Taylor and Christian McCaffrey. Um, I do not mind. You know, you can you can go either way. But I, in my heart, I do believe that if Christian McCaffrey is to stay healthy... He will be better than a fully healthy Jonathan Taylor, uh, so it it takes it takes some courage. I'm I'm not just completely dismissing that, but I'm going to take Christian McCaffrey with the one spot. The most difficult thing with that decision is that well, one people have really strong convictions about it, but the other one difficult part is that we project these players for their full season. 
And I think you're right. I think if he's healthy, he has the better full season. But that doesn't mean I would take McCaffrey over Jonathan Taylor very often because of a true, real fear of injury that's reasonable with multiple years in the age. Taylor is much safer, and I don't know if the gap is big enough to where I have the courage to take McCaffrey. Yep, but you do. All right, I'm on the clock. Uh, Jonathan Taylor obviously went number two, and uh, I'm going to go with a player that I have, uh, I have been building some confidence about. It is not one of the wide receivers. It is Derrick Henry running back mm. for the Tennessee Titans. Okie dokie. Um, I've, I've spent uh, a decent amount of time digging into this injury of late and feel very confident that we're getting vintage Derrick Henry uh, this year. Oh, it's vintage. So it's a little okay, bit older. <laughs> I see. Like more of an antique. Yeah. Um, look, Derrick Henry, if we were coming into this season and last year had continued, would be the 101. So the real discussion here is not the ability – the output, the production, the 2,000-yard season he was coming off of, the real issue is just injury fear. It's just as much of an injury fear for Christian McCaffrey, but we're not sitting here taking Derrick Henry 101 every once in a while. It's yeah. weird. Um, it just feels like too easy to throw away his production and worry about injury. I'm taking him at the 103 in every draft. It is, it is funny that you go back and you look on a per-game basis. All the arguments are made that Christian McCaffrey is better than Jonathan Taylor. and it's like Neither one of them were at the level that Derrick Henry was at. I would add, though, that there is a, a slight addition of the change of the offense. You know, losing A.J. Brown, will there be uh, you know, a, a more difficult time running just from that standpoint? But he is... He looks completely healthy. The injury risk appears to be... In Vrabel, we trust, man. Yeah, that I agree. I agree. All right, Justin Jefferson went off the board at 104. The Deucers on the clock at 105. Kyle? The first ever mistake <laughs> okay. on this show is All about right. to be made. Full stop. <laughs> we debated between Cup and Eckler, and we went with Eckler. You Ooh. went with Austin Eckler. Oh, look at that. Okay. Okay. I was going to say, if anybody needs a little extra time on a draft pick, I do have some interlude music that we, that we could use. <laughs> is so that, uh, just let me know. Uh, is that from our dev team? That is from our dev okay. team. Oh, man. We I, never get to participate in the show in any way. Well, I will say this. I might need uh, a little bit of pause. Do you need a minute? Yeah, give me just a second. Dominate your draft with Baltimore <laughs> Draft Kit. Dominate your draft with Baltimore Draft Kit. Oh, Dominate. Man. Go. Oh. <laughs> so stupid. So yeah, obviously you have had some time to think. Uh, Austin Eckler off the board to the Deucers, Najee Harris, Cooper Cup, Joe Mixon. So Cooper Cup at seven, uh, Joe Mixon at one hundred eight, Dalvin Cook, DeAndre Swift at one ten. Jason, you're on the clock. You I, will have two quick picks. I think this mock draft actually looks a lot like home leagues, where even though some of the mocks we've been doing lately, and and if you're an underdog, you've got a very wide receiver heavy first round. Usually, when you get back to your home leagues like everyone wants those running backs and that's what's happened here you see guys like DeAndre Swift often in the second being drafted but that pushes Jamar Chase to me yeah. at the 111 a guy I would not have expected to be there so I didn't actually need that time oh, I just okay. needed that mad jam. well last time you tried to draft Jamar Chase in the first round but it was a mayhem mock draft. Oh, and you yeah. were it was it was changed, and you ended up with Kelsey. So this is kind of redemption for you. Yeah, it is. Um, and we had just had a question on the Footcast the other day of do we ever go zero RB? And, and you know, last year there was a time. It's very difficult, I think, in most home leagues for our strategy. We I I don't really love that that much. But we brought up one situation. We're like, well, look, if if it oh, falls it's right. Here. If it falls right and you could start with Jamar Chase and Stephon Diggs, then that's I you know You're in. I'm in. You're willing. Those two guys both have a chance, each one of them, to be the number one wide receiver. The only problem is they can't both do it this year. Impossible. So um I'm hoping <laughs> they for tie. Um, okay, I guess they, <laughs> yeah. I, I guess not go. impossible. Way to take down that Sorry. wall, Mr. Sorry. Gorbachev. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh All we right. got it in. All right, so I'm starting this with the Friday show, man. Two wide receivers, Jamar Chase and Stephon Diggs. All right, after Chase went Adams and Kelsey, by the way, for those listening, if you're watching on YouTube, the draft board is up. You can follow along. Jamar Chase, Stephon Diggs for Jason. He is in that boat where he has uh, 
Look, I'm I'm excited to see what running backs come your way later in the draft because how exciting is it to run Jamar Chase and Stephon Diggs yeah, out there? Yeah, extremely. Alvin Kamara, Saquon Barkley, Nick Chubb. By the way, Nick Chubb, don't know if you know this, tied for fourth right now on the best odds to be offensive player of the year. Wow. Wow. Uh, so kind of interesting. That feels uh, like a bad bet. <laughs> uh, Derrick Henry is is up above there. Uh, Aaron Jones, C.D. Lamb, and the Deucers back on the clock. Any disappointment in the players that went just ahead of you? We were all in on Aaron Jones. That's okay. that's our guy. So. I expect that from Al over there. Oh yeah. Right now we're debating between Javante Williams and Tyreek Hill. So any thoughts, guys? Yeah, I mean, just don't pick the right one. Yeah. Yeah. We really, I, I definitely have thoughts. I'll tell you after your pick. We really don't want Jason to have any good running backs at all. So we're thinking about <laughs> so that. Just sabotaging Jason? Just starting your draft nice. by destroying. We, I don't know if we recommend the ruin someone else plan. but I will say this. There is no chance that anyone you would draft here would get back to me. I'm still like 16 picks away. All right, so Eckler in the first. What's your second round pick here? We're going to go with Javante Williams. We think that he's going to be a difference maker. Yeah. It's the right call. I like it. Yeah, and I think you're going to see more of that um, excitement percolating into the second round now. I mean, Javante is one of a handful of players that have a draft cost that could equal league winner if you're right about them. Josh Allen goes next, and I'm back on the clock. Derrick Henry in the first round. At running back, you know, there are some names there. Leonard Fournette, who I just have had a hard time drafting, even though I shouldn't. But maybe I should now if Brady's not around. If Brady's not around, Leonard Fournette is going to be so much worse. Yeah, that's fair. Um, also, Zeke, who I, I have no problem with. I am going to be going the wide receiver route here, though. I'm going to go with a player that was the number two overall wide receiver last season. I'm going to take Debo Samuel. I don't think he was going to make it back around to me. No, he was definitely not. I was it. so you took Debo, team 2 took Tyreek Hill. I was hoping that Debo and Mike Evans would make it here to the uh to You're the turn. double double. Yeah, and well, I mean, I guess Do you get any hesitation with Evans? I was just gonna, yeah. now that I'm now that we've been talking about Brady, um I think he's going to be back. <laughs> so, uh, like in my projections, I have I have Mike Evans very, very high in my rankings. The the Chris Godwin situation is still. When will he be fully back? And yeah, I, the the the, the writers out of camp right now are saying, "Oh, everything is looking so great with Godwin," and then they amend that and or uh, you know they append it and say, "But he's not going to be there for week one." That like right. that those two things are both true. He is doing great in his recovery. He is practicing with the team, and he will not be there week one. That's your conviction? I'm fully convicted of that, yeah. Uh, so, uh, All right, Mike, so you got to make a couple decisions yeah. here. So I'm going to take Mike Evans, and then the question becomes, do I take one of these other running backs that I like, which they're admittedly higher risk. You know, Zeke, James Conner, they both, they both carry risk to me, but I, the upside to them is both the top 10 running back. And then the wide receiver, of course, I would be looking at would be Michael Pittman, who I'm at the turn. 0.0% chance that Michael Pittman comes back to me. So is this a just take your guy? Yeah, because you have to. Yes. There's no way to get him later. Uh, and I'm going to do that. Oh, Interesting. If you didn't, we're changing the graphic again. <laughs> <laughs> right. We built this city. So I was, um, I was hoping you wouldn't take Zeke. That was my, my hopes and dreams there. If you had, I would have been targeting Mark Andrews with my next pick. Okay. But Mark Andrews went one pick before me, so Zeke is on the board. Um, I'll let you know what I do in just a minute. All right, my third pick, Derek Henry, Debo Samuel, the first two selections, Mike's team right now, McCaffrey, Evans, and Pittman with that last selection. I have to admit, as as one of the non like, I've not even really been a visitor to Pity City, yeah. right? Like I've heard yeah. about it. It's mm -hmm. you guys gave me pamphlets for years. Yeah, you just um, you, you take the bypass. Yeah, I I mean I, I just have a shortcut to other places. Mm -hmm. um, but even I have seen the billboards at this point. I mean I 
The grass it's, is looking pretty green in that city, huh? The, the popularity of Pity City is being spread around. So my travel agent tried to suggest it. Okay. I was like, I don't know. Look, all are welcome. Except for Jason. <laughs> How dare you? So, um, you know, at this point in the draft, the idea of having two of a handful of workhorse running backs, I've talked about what I like later in the draft, and I know we're mock drafting together, so I might not get some of these wide receivers I love, but I'm still going to go Ezekiel Elliott here in the third round. Okay. Keenan Allen off the board next. Uh, so team four has no running backs yet. Neither does Jason. But the Deucers back on the clock. Eckler and Javante with the first two picks. Yeah, we double it up running backs, kind of like how Jeremy and I double pickled Jason and, and Mike <laughs> yesterday. Oh, very fair. Very fair. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you pack your things right now. The first mid-show firing. You get very impressive. Oh, oh my, my God! Boom shakalaka! <laughs> now I'll give you the applause because it was very good. You noticed that the the proportion of when Al has an influence on the show to when he boom shakalakas us, it's nearly 80, 90 percent. Kyle, so, so that's want, a, that's a, pick, know, that's a pickleball I, slam. I want you to know something, Kyle. You are dead to me. <laughs> I mean, you are dead to me. And, and for the non pickleball players out there, a pickle is when oh, you gosh. when you beat somebody eleven to zero, and a double pickle would be doing that twice in a row. Oh, man. Oh, man. These guys are out of control. Wh who allowed them on the microphones? We did. Yeah, yeah, that was a, that was a mistake. Oh, so it uh, looks like AJ Brown's your pick. Yeah, we wanted Keenan Allen, but we went upside with AJ Brown. Really, you wanted you were going to go Keenan and Austin Eckler. We talked about it. Okay, okay. All right, Leonard Fournette off the board next. James Conner, Kyle Pitts, Mahomes, and Herbert. So we've had Allen, Mahomes, and Herbert off the board at the quarterback position. Jason, um, you know, talk to us about the thought process here with Jamar Chase, Fun Diggs. Are you sitting here thinking purely running back? Are you looking at embracing a full zero RB? What are you thinking? Yeah, I mean, I, I when I when I pick uh, when I picked Jamar Chase and Stephon Diggs. You want to have a plan, and my plan originally was to hope for, when I've taken wide receiver, wide receiver at this turn, I personally like having the 3-4 turn of the young stud athletic profiles of Brees Hall and Travis Etienne. So if I could get them at the next turn, that would be great. Now I started to get my hopes up when, you know, like Fournette started dropping. Mm -hmm. But also, I'm not going to just say, well, that's my only strategy. You know, you've got T. Higgins here. Um, that I think is very much worth a draft pick. That would be wild, though. It would. It would if be. If you doubled up Jamar Chase and T. Higgins as two of your first that, picks, that is the issue here. Is is the the shared team, the value of Higgins over those running backs? I think is there when you drop to the next wide receiver. Who, depending on your rankings, maybe it's Terry McLaurin or Deontay Johnson or DJ Moore. Those guys to me aren't worth what T. Higgins would be, and I don't want to do the double up. So I'm going to say. The 12 team does not have a running back yet. They're probably going to take running backs. I'm going to go based on ADP so that I can hopefully get both of the guys I want. Right now, that means I'm taking Brees in the third and hoping ETN gets back to me. Which he did. Uh, Cam Akers and Terry oh. McLaurin go next. So Brees Hall, Travis ETN, that would be one of those um, they better hold Jamar Chase and Stephon Diggs' hands out going to the field because <laughs> not that they can't be – yeah. cornerstones of this backfield, but they would both be some question marks, especially, you know, early in the year when you haven't, you've literally never seen either one play on a, a, a football field. Exactly right. This is, I mean, a professional field. Yeah, right. This is um, not, this ain't your mama's draft. Okay. This is not a yeah. safe draft. This is an upside trying to win a championship draft. These two guys could burn and flame out in their first uh, NFL experience on the field. They could get off to a really slow start before they get hot in the second half. But I love the profile of pass-catching, young, athletic, explosive, high-draft capital running backs to go with my known proven commodities at wide receivers. So when I took Jamar Chase and Stephon Diggs, my hope was that I ended up with this exact team where I have it. All right, well, Chase Diggs, Brees Hall, Travis Etienne, uh, Higgins off the board next, then Kittle, Montgomery, and Waller. So we've seen three uh, tight ends, Pitts, Kittle, Waller go between the 3-8 and the 4-6. Deontay Johnson off the board next. The Deucers back on the clock. 
Do you have some uh, great conviction about who you want here, or is there a debate in hand? Well, based on our UDK tiers, Deniston Moore Jr. will easily be our pick. <laughs> Deniston Moore Jr. That would All be right. DJ for short. Uh, okay. Well, I, you know, you take that temptation off the board for me. You have Eckler, Javante, A.J. Brown, and DJ Moore. And here we are, uh, my fourth pick. You know, I... I guess I'm I'm very happy to find out that that's actually his name, Deniston. 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 No wonder he goes by DJ. Oh, dude, Deniston is rad. Deniston is rad for a chess player. Oh, dude, a man, a man, <laughs> for a chess player. Get out, you need to break the barrier. Be out there. Be faster than everyone. You're like, my name is Deniston. Deniston Eat the it. menace. <laughs> yeah, the Deniston menace. Deniston the menace. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a Friday. Uh, so I'm I'm having a hard time kind of figuring out this pick. So just give me a sec. I mean, it's tough. You're not gonna get out of your head. By the way, why don't you explain what that actually was? <laughs> yeah, so we were just goofing around in the office the other day. We found this uh, type two text thing that could just with ai make it sound like different people are talking and then all of a sudden our our programmers from the other room were like they just uh made this little jingle yep. from uh from ai so yeah thank you yeah, yeah i don't know where it came from uh, all i know is i can't get it out of my head <laughs> it, yeah we're spreading it to you so to, let me be honest the two picks that i'm looking at here are mike williams and Cortland sutton uh i mike isn't even looking up from where he's sitting because he doesn't even want me to entertain the Cortland Sutton indulgence. If Mike ended up with well, Mike Evans, Mike Pittman. Follow your rankings, bro. What are you doing? Uh, what if you, I give here's you what he's triple doing. mics? I, I mean, mean you, you, you can follow your rankings, but you also got to know your draft. You got to know your league. Yeah. You got to know who's between your picks. But he knows that one of those players is not making it back. Well, that's fair. That's I, all. That's all I'm saying. I'm trying to help my friend, my great friend. Very attractive, incredibly smart friend. Yeah, I mean, it's tough because these are two of my guys, you and I. Yeah. So I guess I'll take my my guy. Mike Williams off the board. Lamar Jackson <laughs> goes next. <laughs> Mike is very pleased. And um, <laughs> Corlin Sutton's going to be off the board here to Mike with the uh, fourth pick, I assume. Uh, that is... Uh, wait, let me check with the computer. Yeah, that, that is correct. So that's an easy one for me. So now but now I, what are you thinking here? You got McCaffrey and three wide receivers. Yeah, so I'm I'm looking over at the running backs, and it's it's hard because I mean we are we're entrenched in the dead zone, right? The ADP, the top is Josh Jacobs. No thank you. J.K. Dobbins is next. He is intriguing because I think that this is like uh, to me, uh, where I've seen him drafted, this is a little bit of a, a draft discount, but this is also, I think, taking a player who's not going to help you at the beginning of the year, which is always a, a scary proposition. But looking at the rest of these guys, like Mitchell, I, I'm with Andy that I really like A.J. Dillon and, and Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Those are the next ADP running backs. Once things are going... Do I have the faith that J.K. Dobbins is better than those players? And I'm just I'm I got Christian McCaffrey, so like I have a little bit of a surplus, hopefully, from my RB one position that you know he can carry a little bit until J.K. Dobbins rounds into form. And being at the turn here, I have you know such a long wait that these running backs are going to just they're going to be all gone. So I'm gonna do it. I'm. I think this is the first time I've taken J.K. Dobbins, but with this build of pure, like to me, just really upside uh, with McCaffrey, Evans, Pittman, Sutton, and then Dobbins. Maybe I, I get a, a running back two who's a little bit more stable till Dobbins is ready. But by the um, this is a bet. End of year, J.K. Dobbins has it back. Okay. Which yeah. I don't I don't know if that's the right way to go, but I'll make it in this mock. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Um I'm really glad Josh Jacobs went off the board next. Not that I would have been that tempted. I we have a sleepers, breakouts, busts, and values episodes next week. Josh Jacobs is near the top of my fearful bust candidate list where I just don't know what's gonna happen there. Um 
I am I'm sitting here now with my fifth pick. Henry and Elliott are my running backs. Debo, Mike Williams, my wide receivers. And I've got one of each, both my guys, sitting here in the fifth round. Allen Robinson, A.J. Dillon. I'm not going to get a running back I have A.J. Dillon level confidence in. Coming back around, I'm at the third pick, so it's going to be a long wait. Ooh. So I'm taking A.J. Dillon. You're you're building super balanced here. Yeah, I know. I'm going to just ping-ponging between uh, running backs and wideouts. Jalen Waddle goes next, but Mike Williams and A.J. Dillon, uh, my last two picks. The Deucers with Eckler, Javante, A.J. Brown, and uh, Deniston Moore. The Deniston. Yes. Uh, what are you looking at here? We were looking at Dylan as well just because we don't love the running backs in this round, but I think Allen Robinson's the highest on our board. I like to hear that. Okay. Um, you know, don't get him too high on your board or we're just going to jeopardize that beautiful ADP. But, okay, you went with uh, three wideouts in a row, Metcalf, Murray, Judy, Amari Cooper and uh, Alman Ross St. Brown go next. Jason's back with his late fifth and early sixth. So I've got Jamar Chase, Stephon Diggs, uh, locked in at wide receiver, and then some upside hopefuls in Brees Hall and Travis Etienne at running back. Here I'm at the five six turn, so when I'm I'm one spot off at the eleven spot, and whenever I'm there. I'm I'm viewing both picks together. I'm trying to think what am I doing with uh, these two picks as opposed to just who do I like the best right now. I was really, really hoping that at this next turn I could get Jalen Hurts. Uh, he's obviously someone I just talked up on the My Guys show. I say if he gets to the sixth round, I will take him every time. And the reality is I'm, I'm at that 5-6 turn, even though this is the 5-11. The Team 12 does not yet have a quarterback. And I would be very sad if Jalen Hurts went. So I'm just going to grab him now. You're doing the now. Pittman like Mike. Yeah, I'm just going to grab him now. Just take your guy. And grab my guy. And then uh, after Jalen Hurts, the Team 12 took Elijah Mitchell and Chris Godwin, which I am actually quite happy about because when I looked at wide receivers, um, I was between Chris Godwin and Marquise Hollywood Brown. Those two guys, I think, are going to be great by the end of the year. But they're going to come in different ways. Chris Godwin will be the second half of the year. And I think Hollywood will be the first half of the year with a healthy Kyler and no DeAndre Hopkins. And when I look at my team, I think about Brees Hall and Travis Etienne. Brees Hall and Travis Etienne might get off to a slower start, you know, as, as essentially both rookies in a way, and should be great in the second half of the year. I don't want to triple that up with a Chris Godwin. So I think that Marquise Hollywood Brown in my flex helps me uh, weather some of the early running back storm uh, if Brees Hall and Travis Etienne get off to a slow start. All right, Dalton Schultz, Clyde edwards alaire Burrow, Miles Sanders, and Brandon Cooks off the board next. I kind of kind of had my eyes on Brandon Cooks coming around at the 6'10", not going to get him. The Deucer's back on the clock. Three wide outs in a row. Kyle, what is the, uh, what is the you know, the latest with the Deucer's? We have a ton of wide receivers we like here. And based on our build, it kind of stinks because we could take another <laughs> one, but our team's already looking pretty good there. Yeah, they would go to your bench as your wide receiver four, which it it's not the worst to have some other options there. So uh, what's the pick going to be? Are you looking or considering anything at the quarterback or tight end position? We have some quarterbacks that we definitely like, but we think we can wait based on y'all. So I'm just going to take the wide receiver that we have highest, and it's Juju. All right, Ooh, okay. Juju Smith-Schuster off the board, then Hawkinson, putting me into a uh, an interesting spot here. I have one quarterback that I think could be in that league winning, worthy of a six-round pick spot. Int really? Um, I do. I do have one that I've, I've you know, I've been taking oh, a little bit sure. more, and oh, okay. I'm pretty excited about. And I'm coming back around, and I'll be grabbing most likely a wide receiver at that point. There are names that I think are values, and again, we're drafting against each other, so I'm just saying them. But, you know, Adam Thielen, I'm pretty excited about Adam Thielen in this new offense uh, with Kevin O'Connell. Gabe Davis is there. Um, I've also got a my guy of Jason sitting at the running back position. Don't think we didn't see him there, Jason. Uh, Chase Edmonds on the board, but I've got Derrick Henry, Ezekiel Elliott, and A.J. Dillon. So I'm actually going to go for the victory in this league. I think getting Russell Wilson here in the sixth round, 
Unlimited. No stack for Inch. Mike yeah, with that, Cortland Sutton. Would you have taken him at, at it, one of your next two picks? It would have been in strong consideration just sure. because of the stack. Uh, I mean, still tons of quarterbacks left on the board that are very acceptable to me as quarterback one and some upside. But if if I'm right on Cortland Sutton, that would mean that I'm right on Russell Wilson being great. And so that, that would be a glorious stack to uh, to have. I will take Jason's mic. I no! Edmonds. <laughs> okay, so there, I, you, there was no no way he was coming back. But in 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 ADP, I have J.K. Dobbins, bro. I need a I need uh, that, someone to start. Look, look, it's a great pick as far as a player you need. But obviously, being at the turn, you reached way ahead of ADP. When I That's made right. the choice to go Jalen Hurts, Marquise Brown, it was because my next pick is that seven eight turn. His ADP is in the eighth, and I th like wholeheartedly had <laughs> planned on having Chase Edmonds get all the way back to me at the 7-Eleven. I could tell because you had very little to say when I started mentioning his name. <laughs> yeah. He was already starred over here. Yeah, you. yeah, that was uh, – No, your, you know, you just said it. Know your league. Yeah. So um, – All right, and so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that now of just like uh, – with those three running backs of McCaffrey – Dobbins, Edmonds, Edmonds can fill in at my running back two spot while I'm waiting for Dobbins. You're sitting three three right now. Yeah, so I am very balanced, and I'm going to take Darnell Mooney, who uh, wide receiver one from the Chicago Bears. That like the the Bears offense could be could it could be that offense that we love for fantasy football in terms of it's Mooney, it's Cole Komet, and that is it. Now now it's a obviously. Not a high-powered offense. Look, this is not the Kansas City Chiefs with Tyreek and Travis Kelsey, but Mooney over a thousand last year. I think that fields will be a bit better. Uh, Jason's super <laughs> super happy right now. I went with Gabe Davis. My pick would have been Mooney, Mike. I would have gone oh. with Mooney. I felt like he would be a perfect uh, balancing act here with Debo and Mike Williams. But no, Mike and I stealing away Jason's favorite guys. They, Gabriel they Davis. They both were ADP supposed to get to me. I wrote those two. <laughs> they were my next turn. My next turn. You're talking about the two guys that you literally went on uh, like soapboxes for yesterday. Yes. They're just going to make it. But yeah, this, ah, I hate you guys so much. <laughs> um, all right, Kyle, you and the Deucers back on the clock. I want to see if you can take five wide receivers in a row. Can you do it? We can't. We don't have the stones for it. But All right. <laughs> we will take Ramondre Stevenson with Damian Harris off the board. It was a lot easier to take him. Yeah, I was wow. going to ask because Damian Harris was in consideration for me because seventh round, if you got what Damian Harris was last year, then you're in really, really good shape. Um, never never have too many running backs, but you didn't get that choice. You went Ramondre right after Damian Harris. That's wild. Um, Rashad Bateman goes next, then Traylon Burks, uh, Michael Thomas. Uh, Drake London and Ken Walker. Jason, uh, I don't know if any of your my guys are really left to pick from. You can just walk they, out if you want. They aren't. Uh, you guys saw to that. I still have one of them in Jalen Hurts. But uh, here I am at a place where I, I do need running back help uh, for my Brees Hall, Travis Etienne. Just draft Kareem Hunt and get it over with. Uh, thank you. That is <laughs> you my don't pick. Need to, okay. I don't need an explanation. Just take Kareem Hunt. That was the pick. Um, so I will take Kareem Hunt. I think he is kind of the last guy at a certain tier. Uh, if you haven't been able to tell, I like pass catching running backs uh, with good uh, production and athletic profiles. Uh, he was the running back 10 two years ago. So now I am at the eight. Two, I have a team with Kareem Hunt, Brees Hall, Travis Etienne, uh, Jamar Chase, Stephon Diggs, and Marquise Hollywood Brown, and Jalen Hurts at the top. I'm not ever really entertaining tight ends in this round, but it is worth bringing up that the only middle tier tight end that I think has a shot of kind of having a bigger season, and we didn't talk about him much on our tight end episode is Dallas Goddard, who would complete a stack with Jalen Hurts. He would. Hurts. He would. So it is very interesting. Ugh. You got the um, stones for Gadir? I don't, because I think in the end he is the third target to a much better player who is named Devonta Smith, who completes a stack in a different, more important position. Oh, nicely position. done. So I will take nicely done. the second-year wide receiver for Jalen Hurts. Okay, Devontae Smith off the board. Singletary, Ayuk, Olave, Hopkins finally goes in the uh, eighth round. Uh, Tom Brady off the board in the eighth round as well. Kyle, the deucers are back on the clock. We're torn right here between Trey Lance, of course, 
Of and uh, and Aaron Rodgers. Oh wow! I think I think the right de- you know the right decision to make. Yeah, you do. I know what Kyle wants, and I know what Owl wants. Oh man! So this really should be a Brooks pick. Yeah, because if if you are Brooks if you're, is shaking his if head. you're new to he the foot, want in on if that. you're new to the foot clan, Kyle, I want Stafford. Oh yes! <laughs> yes! Uh, wow! How funny! So they oh, are man. they're torn between three different quarterbacks uh do you need a minute or yeah oh let's... gosh no, no. <laughs> i won't i won't subject the people to the whole song uh who are you going with for the theatrics i would say lance but i love rogers opening schedule and i want listeners to get him so aaron Rodgers. all right all right you uh you fell on the sword there i i can't take lance i just took russell wilson so i can't ruin mike uh, oh, Elijah man. Elijah Moore was was a uh, on my short list. Unfortunately, he just went ahead of my pick. Yeah, he was on my list too. You know, Gabe Davis is uh, was my previous pick at running back. You know, Rashad Penny. It's tempting to just add a little depth to my backfield. Uh, he stands out as kind of being in a better tier than the rest of the names. Uh, this is a full round after the currently injured or uh, do you consider that an injury when Which? you have a surgery for a hernia yes but yeah so yeah, yeah. ken walker not able to practice right now already drafted ahead of rashad penny yeah so i'm going to take penny uh garrett wilson goes next mike you've got back-to-back picks as we head into the ninth round of our mock draft i love it because i know exactly where i'm going i'm not going to mess around on the turn trey lance on to my team Make no mistake, and Foot- the Lazard King. Yes, onto my team. Yes, I was going to say, make no mistake, Foot Clan. If Mike is wrong about Trey Lance, he will feel it everywhere. Oh yes, in the in the world. Yes. on his own rosters. Uh, yeah, I saw Lazard there, Mike. It was a temptation. I went with Penny. I just felt like the running back depth. Honestly, if you had not taken Penny, it was going to be a that would have been an interesting internal debate for me. Sure, sure. Yeah, the. Uh, Situation there, though, went with the running back. You got Lance and Lazard. James Cook off the board next. Would have been a fun one to take a look at. I'm in the ninth round, and to be honest with you, I'm having a hard time here. Um, I, I'm going to go with Damian Pierce, the rookie running back out of Houston. Um, I like it. I have five running backs on the roster. I don't care. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm content with that. I am going to need to take a tight end and probably another wide receiver with my last two picks, but – Renfro off the board next. Back to the deucers. We wanted James Cook, Damian Pierce, and Hunter Renfro in that order. <laughs> and those are the three really? names right before you. Oh, wow. So are you scrambling a little bit? I bet you're pretty disappointed. Joe Flacco's still there. Yeah, yeah. It's it's fine. We got our tears, though. So, okay, uh, what do you got? We're feeling all right. Uh, there's not much left. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to <laughs> dominate his draft. <laughs> I think at this point, we just... We Best player available. Yeah, that was on. You got to hold the button now, Kyle. I'm just gonna go with Robert Woods. He's safe. Okay. All right. Robert Woods. Uh, panic pick from the Deucers. <laughs> uh, and then Jason, you won't get that choice to take a, a, any of the tight ends wow. on the board. Goddard, Ertz, Knox, back to back to back. Lockett, Gordon, and you're back on the clock. You do need a tight end. Uh, I was so happy to see the Dallas Goddard, Zach Ertz, Dawson Knox run happen because those guys weren't really players I was targeting, especially having already grabbed Devonta Smith. One player that I was really, really, really hoping got to me was Melvin Gordon, and unfortunately he went one pick beforehand. Right now, having Brees Hall, Travis Etienne, and Kareem Hunt, I do feel like running back is somewhere I need to look for um, a value, someone that can uh, solidify things or just kind of really beat their ADP right now, and they're in my professional opinion will be a timeshare for a very very good offense similar to Melvin Gordon he is probably the number two but Daryl Henderson is a good sure. running okay. back who has always been good for fantasy can I sorry go ahead finish, no, finish your thought but I'm gonna amplify it amplify away Charles Robinson I mentioned it yesterday when he was talking about Allen Robinson but he's been at all these camps um great reporter smart mind he talked about that report of Sean McVay actually using Cam Akers and Daryl Henderson. For what it's worth, he is 100% sure that is what is going to take place. Okay. He said he believes that Sean McVay's uh, ideology on the running back position has changed 
from the previous years that, you know, girly kind of usage that he understands that you want to wear the tread on both of those guys at the same time. So for what it's worth, there is that educated opinion out there that that is the conviction. And if you get one half of that rushing offense in the ninth round, that's the seal of the draft. Well, here I am at the 10th round, a long time to wait. It's either this pick or my next one has to be a tight end. And while there are a few that I am fine grabbing very, yeah, very late, I know late, what you're doing. I I'm going to grab you're doing. Cole Komet, yeah. a PPR machine who should be the number two target in his offense. And, you know, look, he had zero touchdowns last year. That was an anomaly of anomalies. That's given, none. Given his uh, volume of targets, yards, everything else. Jimmy Grandpa is gone. Cole Komet, the touchdowns will come. We already know the targets and receptions will be there. So in the 10th round, he will round out my uh, my final position. So back to when I was on the clock for uh, at, in the 7th, when I took Darnell Mooney. Yes. That was one of the thoughts because I, uh, I was considering Darnell Mooney and Gabe Davis. Yep. Like high upside wide receivers. And after I took Mooney, you know, I'm that far in the draft. It was, that's interesting because. Because Cole Komet is, I'm in agreement that he's one of my favorite. When you punt tight end, get someone who's going to get a bunch of volume. But there's no way that I want Darnell Mooney and Cole Komet on the True. exact same True. team. So you I just need that whole after, Bears offense. After I took Mooney, I was kind of realizing, well, that is almost making another decision. It's Interesting. You, you gave the tip of like map things out. So just uh, like. This was just a realization of 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 now of like if I'm getting Mooney, I'm probably out on Cole Komet. It's it's of course not impossible that both of them have fantasy value, but do I really want to be tied to the passing attack of the Bears? I don't think I do. All right, the Deucers back on the clock after the panic pick of Robert Woods that they were not really happy with. Um, Kyle, what do you got going on? We definitely wanted Komet, but we want some votes, so we're gonna get Luth. <laughs> oh, okay. yes. All right. Oh. Unfortunately, you will get some votes. I'm also, unfortunately, James Robinson went next. Uh, somebody whose name I wrote down is maybe a last round pick, but uh, I'm back on the clock. I'm looking at wide receiver depth here, and I have a very interesting situation because if I was drafting and I was really focused on the beginning of the year, that's when I'm thinking about the Jalen Tolbert situation in Dallas. Okay. But I'm not. With my with my roster, I am not thinking beginning of the year. I'm thinking who they paid a lot of money to. I'm thinking a player that will slide onto my potential IR and give me another waiver wire spot, but also will be the, you know, 1B on a great offense to score more points than anybody in football. I'm going to take Michael Gallup. Nice. Uh, oh. Who started running. And I'm gonna put him on my on my IR, and then I'm gonna come back and get somebody else from the waiver wire later. I can dig that. Uh, so I have my tight end selection, and just whoever I want to take here as uh, as a late round flyer. So the tight end I'm gonna go with is going to be David and Joke, who had someone on Twitter asking, uh, you know, elaborate more about Jacoby Brissett because I mentioned he targets the tight end position. We don't have like a ton of Jacoby Brissett you know, uh, sample like we have, but we do have essentially two full years as a starter for the Indianapolis Colts. And you go back to those. And the first year it was Jack Doyle was the number two target in that offense. Just one target behind T Y Hilton. The next time we had Jacoby as a starter, Jack Doyle was tied with Zach Pascal as the number one target. Is this just a product of the lack of weapons for Jacoby Brissett, or it, it, but then we saw him utilizing the tight ends in Miami as well. So I think that there is a there's a chance that that just is who Jacoby Brissett is as a player in Joku, athletes off the charts. And looking at the the depth chart for the Browns, it's Amari Cooper, a rookie David Bell, and then uh, Donovan Peoples Jones, who's a, the deep threat, won't see the volume. So I, I really like David and Joku at the end. Uh, and then my wide receiver or running back, if I'm just going to take a flyer here, I already have Mike Evans, so it, it might scare me off of it, but it's not going to. I'll take Julio Jones and see, because if he has something left, if Julio has something left, it will pay off. And if Brady retires, I will not be happy. Yeah, so I... <laughs> because this team will be destroyed. I punted the tight end I wanted. 
because I knew that you like David Njoku. And I knew that would be your pick from the remaining tight ends. And I'm going to go with my final pick, the stack with my quarterback. I will take Albert Aguabanam. I'm fine with that. On the yeah, potential yeah, yeah. that he like will it. be involved. It, it certainly more confidence is in the tight ends involvement with Tim Patrick's injury out for the season. Yep. If I'm wrong, I'm going to go to the waiver wire and fix the tight end position in some way. But Aguabanam will round out my draft. The Deucers, who have the Muth, who got Luth in the uh, 10th round, have your final pick. Yeah, we wanted to get high upside, so we're going with the true Kenny G, Kenneth Gainwell. Okay, oh, I true, like that pick. The true Kenny G, Kenneth I, Gainwell. I That's like good. That pick a lot. Um, wow. When is the last time we heard that? Uh, the smooth route. I know. I know. Kenny G. <sighs> maybe, it's been, maybe it's been years. Yeah, maybe he's not making albums anymore. Yeah. I think it might be over. Uh, all right, I have the second to last pick in the draft. I am even with wide receivers and running backs. I've already got my quarterback and tight end here. So I can go either direction. And there are players that I love, two rookies, one at each position. George Pickens, yep. I think, is the dude. I think he's going to be great. However. Really? This year, you think he'll be I, great? I think he. I think that there maybe is. Maybe clarify the dude just so that people don't think yeah. he's so, the number one wide receiver for the Steelers. I think it is not outrageous to think that he could finish this year as the number one wide receiver for the Steelers this year okay. this year now that's not how I have it projected I definitely think he will be the number one wide receiver for the Steelers at some point in the future if we're talking dynasty leagues I, I just he is a really really talented guy who's been balling out and showing why there were plenty of people mocking him as a first round draft pick don't forget Justin Jefferson yeah. fell to the second round and sometimes you get a chip on your shoulder Justin Jefferson or uh uh sorry AJ Brown Yes, okay. Um, so, I'm not going that way, but I wanted to bring his name up. I've got the second to last pick in the draft. I am going for the stars. I'm a little bit scarier at running back, and I'm going to change from being scared to scaring y'all with Isaiah Pacheco <laughs> running back for the Kansas City Chiefs, getting all the buzz Okay. Uh, right now in camp. This is where you take him, the, basically the last pick in a draft, because – what week, if? week one, we're going to come out, and he's a special teamer and doesn't do anything. I cut him. I move on. I've got a waiver pick. If week one he comes out and he's splitting with Clyde Edwards-Alaire and looks like he could take over the job as a you know 215-pound sub-4-4 running back, agree. One thing uh, that has been interesting over training camp and you know, uh, some other people that I, I admire and they're, they're smart just analyzing the situation of the Chiefs running back because it's been all over the place. Like we had, yeah, we just had Ronald Jones running with the twos yesterday, yesterday. Yesterday or the day before, they completely shook it up. Jones with the twos, and then it was Gore, and then Pacheco was the last person up. What has remained constant? Clyde edwards alaire has been the number one guy for this team, As, and that's a, well, he should be. Yes, of course he should be, but he still is at this point. That it seems like. Clyde is locked in yeah. as their number one guy and like falling in drafts. I know we've it it feels like, well, this is gonna be a fool me thrice with Clyde Edwards Alaire, but I think there is a there is a strong chance that he is a great value at his ADP. Not a not a top ten monster, but a true ADP value at the running back position. Yeah, you're not a fool if that's what you're expecting from him. You're only a fool if you you know, revert to top five the hopes of the rookie yeah all right let's run these rosters back as we close out this uh mock draft my running backs Derek Henry Ezekiel Elliott AJ Dillon Rashad Penny and Damian Pierce wideouts are Debo Samuel Mike Williams Gabe Davis and Michael Gallup my quarterback is Russell Wilson my tight end Albert Aguabano uh I've got wide receivers of Jamar Chase Stephon Diggs Marquise Hollywood Brown and Devonta Smith my running backs are Brees Hall, Travis Etienne, Kareem Hunt, Daryl Henderson, and Isaiah Pacheco with Jalen Hurts at quarterback and Cole Komet at tight end. At wide receiver, I have Mike Evans, Michael Pitty City Jr., Cortland Sutton, Darnell Mooney, Alan Lazard, and Julio Jones. Pretty wide receiver heavy. At running back, Christian McCaffrey, J.K. Dobbins, Chase Edmonds, the stabilizer. <laughs> Thank goodness for him. Uh... And then we have uh, Trey Lance is my quarterback, and David Njoku is my tight end. At running back, I have Austin Eckler, Javante Williams, Ramondre Stevenson, Kenneth Gainwell, 
wide receiver A.J. Brown, D.J. Moore, Juju Smith-Schuster, Allen Robinson, and uh, Robert Woods. And at quarterback, I have Aaron <laughs> Rodgers and tight end, the Muth. The Muth. All right. Well, you can see the entire draft board over on YouTube. You can also join us for our live stream today. If you go to ballerslive.com, it'll make it really easy for you to join us. We'll be answering questions, anything you've got for us, and we'll be giving away an ultimate draft kit for life and some other autographed sports memorabilia. Definitely go to ultimatedraftkit.com. Get that UDK. If you got a draft this weekend, there is time to get in there. Get the information you need. We have a brand new cheat sheet creator so you can print out or use it on your phone and get ready for your draft. Do not be outmaneuvered by those hooligans in your league. Yeah, and I would just say, I really do hope that it is you watching live when we call your name out to give it to you. So make sure you're there. Yeah, yeah and you'll be telling your kids, obviously, that they'll be getting it one day when you bequeath it. So that is it for today's episode. Appreciate all of you. Back with uh, five more shows next week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.